Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be talking about Bitcoin. Uh, there's a lot I could talk about in terms of price speculation or comparison to other cryptocurrencies, but this is just going to be a technical video uh, specifically about how the blockchain works for Bitcoin. So we'll be looking at a simple Python script that takes in some data in the block header, generates the hash, and lets you know if it falls within the difficulty value, and then we'll use it on some real-life block headers to confirm the hashes that miners have found already. So before getting to the code, I just want to do a quick explanation of how the blockchain works and what Bitcoin miners are actually doing. Uh, so Bitcoin is essentially just a ledger, denoting how many coins each address has. And obviously these numbers will change when transactions are made between addresses, and it's very important that the transactions are exact and correct and secure. So instead of having them stored in some sort of central agency where they're liable to something going wrong, uh, it is completely maintained by the global community in a competitive process called mining. So mining is possible due to something called a blockchain, uh, which you see right in front of you. So each block of the blockchain contains a header detailing some information about the block and the body, which contains all the transactions themselves. As a transaction comes in, they simply pile up on top of the most recent block and they wait to be encased in a block of their own. And this is what the miners are doing. Whoever can verify that all transactions are legitimate and non-fraudulent will add the next block to the chain. And that individual will receive a Bitcoin reward and the transactions that occur afterwards will pile up on the block in front of that. And that continues onward basically forever. And each new block is made right about every 10 minutes. So every Bitcoin that exists in circulation right now was created this way. They were all mined. And currently the reward is 12.5 Bitcoin, which is worth right around 75,000 US dollars, uh, assuming a Bitcoin is worth $6,000 right now, which it's changing all the time. So by the time this video is posted, it could be something totally different. Um, but as you could probably imagine, anything with such a massive reward requires an equally massive amount of computer power to accomplish. So that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in this program. All right, so we'll go through the code now. Uh, just as a point of clarification, this isn't a program to actually mine. This is just a program to confirm blocks that have already been mined. But of course, if you understand this program and what it's doing going on to mine afterwards is, is pretty simple. Um, it's the exact same understanding. It's just with changing the nonce value, but we'll get into that in one second. So first we'll go through the actual block headers. Um, here I picked the Genesis block, which is the first block ever in the chain back in 2009. And this is just a random recent block that I chose. Um, so basically these are all the values, the software version number, which is just an integer, the hash of the previous block. In the case of the Genesis block, there is no previous block, so it's just all zeros. But in the case of this random recent block, uh, you can see the hash is a random number with a bunch of leading zeros. And we'll get to that in a second. Uh, the Merkle root is really important. That's basically the hash that's formed from all of the transactions in the entire block. They're hashed upwards in sort of a tree fashion and they land at this value. So if anybody tried to alter or add a transaction or remove a transaction, it would totally change the Merkle root, which would in turn totally change the hash and the block would never be confirmed. So you'd have to have more computing power than the rest of the global community combined if you ever wanted to commit a fraudulent transaction, basically. Uh, the timestamp, this is just Unix time, the number of seconds since the epoch, which is like 1970. Uh, so yeah, 1 1.2 billion seconds was 2009, and 2017 is like 1.5 billion, so about 300 million seconds since 2009. And this is the important part the bits. This is basically the difficulty value of uh, the hash. And essentially, this you have to decode it a little bit. This is the number, and this is the number of bytes. So we'll get into a little bit more specifics on how that's done later. But essentially, this is going to generate a number that is somewhat smaller than 256 bits. Uh, small enough that you'd have to generate a hash with a bunch of leading zeros, as you see here. And of course the hash you generate is gonna to be totally random looking. So the likelihood of getting something like this is really, really low. And the lower the difficulty value, the harder it gets. So the way you do that is by altering the nonce value. This is basically just a random number that happens to generate a very, very small hash. And the way you figure that out is basically just by trying a lot. There's no good way of doing it. And this is sort of the proof of work aspect in the sense that there's no way you could just reverse this. You have to try a ton of nonce values. So it's always going to be such that whoever has more computing power will have more luck essentially in mining a Bitcoin. 
So that basically explains all of these. Obviously, we have the nonce values. Miners have no idea what they are. They just have to try a lot until they get the right one. But since we have them, we'll be able to verify the block headers. So let's get into the code. Uh, so we have some imports for dealing with byte stuff and the hashing algorithm. We have some helper functions. This is just going to reverse Indianess, uh, big Indian to little Indian, or reverse, uh, just because that's needed for formatting stuff. We just hexify, reverse the order, and then undo it. Uh, integer formatting, everything you want it to be in, in hex form, basically. So it takes whatever the integer is, turns it into a hex value. It's going to chop off that 0x that Python gives you to basically signify that it's a hex value. And then it's going to fill to eight hex values, basically eight hex characters, which is 32 bits. And then it's going to reverse Indian the whole thing. This is just the way it's meant to be formatted. Uh, the check target function is going to take in a hash and the target, and it's going to check to see if it hits it, basically. So this is the specific format I was talking about earlier. The first two characters of that target are the size, so we convert that to an integer, basically. That's the number of bytes. And the hex target is going to be the last six characters of that hex target, and you're going to add a bunch of zeros. You're basically going to add some number times zero, which is going to add a, a bunch of zeros to the end. And each hex character is essentially half a byte, right? Two hex characters makes a byte. So you multiply that by two, you subtract out the six hex values we already have here, and you're going to get exactly what your target is, um, which is basically a number, a good amount less than 256 bits that you're trying to get under. And then you're just going to compare them to see if it's low enough. So if the hash is, is less than the hex target, when you convert them both to integers, you've confirmed the block. And otherwise, you've missed the target. So yeah, that's it for the helper functions. Now let's get into the actual function. So here we have get hash, which this is going to take in an entire block header. So one of those full dictionary objects that we have in the other file. And we're just going to format everything first. So basically anything that's an integer, like the version, we're going to format that integer. And anything that's already in hex, we just need a reverse Indian. So we'll go through and do that for each of them. And then we're going to generate the message, which is basically all of those correctly formatted hex values combined. So we just concatenate them all together, and we get this message. And once we have the message, we're going to run it through two rounds of SHA-256, which is basically secure hashing algorithm 256, which is going to take this message and it's going to chop it up and then it's going to do it again. So you're left with some value that is essentially irreversible. So we do the hash once, we use hashlib, we do it again. Uh, we want to make sure it's formatted correctly. So we do sort of the reverse Indian type thing and convert it back to the proper you know, string that represents hash. And we are going to check it with the target. So we're going to pass the hash in, and we're going to pass in basically the bits value, and that's going to tell us what happens. And finally, we're going to return the formatted result. So that's basically the whole thing. Let's take a look again at our block headers, and let's actually try to run this. So we will import main and import our block headers. So first, let's try the genesis block. Um, so we'll do main.get hash, and we'll pass in block headers genesis block. And once we run it, we see the block has been confirmed, and this is the hash that it generated. So you can see there's a bunch of leading zeros here, and this was small enough to fall underneath the value that was given for the difficulty target. So we could try the exact same thing for the other block, which is just this random recent block, 491133. And you can see a similar thing. Um, you'll notice that this recent block has way more leading zeros than this Genesis block. And that's because the difficulty target actually changes over time. It changes such that the community will average about 10 minutes per block. So if the community is a little bit fast, it'll get harder. If the community is slow, it'll actually get easier. And of course, as the value of a Bitcoin has gone way up over time, there have been way more miners. And as you can tell, the difficulty value has gone way up. So all these zeros are needed. This isn't sort of 
just like somebody doing a lot of extra work. This is actually how hard it's become these days. And the point I want to try to make is that this has to be very exact. Like the relationship between the input to the output of the hash is totally different. So let's say I were to go back in here and for this block, I were to increment this by let's say one and I'll save it and let's reload our block headers. And now let's try it again. So we're gonna perform the exact same hash on this, but we've incremented the nonce value by one. And you can see it's totally different. We missed the target, no leading zeros whatsoever. And this is basically what most nonce values are gonna look like, a totally random hash. And every so often you might get one zero or two zeros, but you would have to do a ton of computing power to get to the point where you'd be likely to reach a hash value with enough leading zeros that you would actually mine the block successfully. So hopefully this was a good explanation. Um, these are just two blocks that I picked, but of course, if you wanna try a block of your own, feel free to grab the code from GitHub. I'll put a link in the description and uh, you can confirm some blocks of your own. So, so that's it for the video. Uh, hopefully you got something out of it. If you're brand new to Bitcoin, this might've been sort of a lot, but if you've been around Bitcoin for a while, this was probably pretty basic. So hopefully this video hit a decent middle ground. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. And if you're interested in more content like this in the future, I might make a video about SHA-256. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and you'll be notified when something like that happens. So yeah, thanks for watching.